Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Great to see you all back here again. Again, we're seeing lots of faces coming for every single session. So great to see you. Um, I'm going to drop my GMs in the chat just whilst I invite our speaker to the stage. Hello, Sharia. How are you? So um, very simple presentation. I'll just give a brief, brief overview of what um, but did you see this? Is everything clear? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So this is a very simple, very, very basic, simple presentation. Basically, I assume you know nothing and then try to build up, build up the concepts um, to understand at a high level how blockchain architecture today work. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'll describe what a machine is. So EVM here means Ethereum virtual machine. So you model you model the entirety of, of the of the blockchain as like one big machine, right? And we say virtual because it's like a machine that runs within other like you know physical machines, right? So what is a machine? And generally we divide machines into three parts. So you have the instructions, uh, in other words, the steps that the machine so for a given program, right? For a given program, you have instructions, you have the memory, which is the the, the you can kind of think of it as like, as, as like the, the working set or like the, the current stuff that the, the program is operating on and persistence. In other words, like you want to, whatever you compute, right? Like let's say you are a, um, a let's say you're, you're an order book, right? You want to store the state of the order book between operations. So that's a persistence layer. So um, at a high level, this is how Ethereum works currently, right? So so, okay, well, for that, first of all, how do programs typically work, right? So on the left here, I have a basic C program. Um, and then these are, this is like, you know, a human readable C program, but this is not very much, this is not really like a, a computer readable program, right? How do you make it into a computer readable? You turn it into what we call like machine code. So essentially on the left here is, is you have what, what a human would write, and on the right here, you have what a computer would read, right? So here, um, yeah, first here, sorry. Um, first of all, here you have, uh, you know, you, you essentially have the variable that tracks what the total sum is. You have the variable that tracks what the iterator variable is, so here the i. Um, and then you loop here, and the machine code basically goes like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. You go back, and so on, right? So it's basically like a very primitive set. Um, and this is what typically, like, the hardware does. Now, what does... Ethereum is something very similar, but I would say a little bit more complicated. So on the left here, you have Solidity. Solidity code that is identical to what we have here. And on the right here, we have the equivalent, well, a subset of the equivalent um, Solidity EVM opcode. So like, what are the, the primitive operations that the EVM ex executes, right? So here, um, I won't go into the details here, but EVM is what we call like a stack-based machine, where it's essentially, um, it pushes and pops into its memory um, the operations that are happening here. So you can see here already. Um, so on on this slide we have what like your physical computers typically execute. It's like a very simple idea, and you'll see here that on the Solidity side of things, there's a lot more going on. It's it's somewhat more complex, um, you know, for various reasons relating to like how blockchains work, um, and it requires a quite a few more operations. So already we can see that there's some work we can do here to like improve the performance here. Right. Um, the second part is the memory, um, and this you basically just imagine there's like one massive array, and so address zero is you know the zero slot, address one is the first slot. Okay, there's not much we we're gonna change here. This is basically identical between like physical computers and the EVM. Okay, so not much to do here. Um, the third part is the persistence. So how does Ethereum store? How does Ethereum store the world state? Right, like. You know, I, I have a program that runs a certain operation, um, like an AMM pool, for example, and then I want to update the balances, for example, of the users, right? They're stored somewhere physical on the disks, right? And, and Ethereum uses what we call um, a Merkle Patricia tribe. And I won't go into details of that, but essentially the idea is that the whole Merkle, the whole world state of Ethereum is stored in a tree-like object. So you see, for example, this is the root of the tree, and then for each address, you would walk down the tree until you get to the last node. And this is where the data is stored for your account. So let's say, for example, your account address is like, I don't know, 1357. Or sorry, one, 
let's say one one two one. It will it will go to the first node and the second node, etc. And it walked out until it gets to the leaf node, and then that's your data. Okay. And already you can see that um, there's a bit of complexity involved here. Like for any time you fetch data, you have to walk down this tree to get that data out. All right. So already we see some level up that you can make make here that quite a few projects are exploring. Right. So what can we improve here? Okay. Um, and then I'll describe basically improvements we can make at the level of the opcodes and that we can make at the level of the um, state, okay, at a very, very high level. So instructions here, what we have is that we have Solidity code that maps to EVM code. And one issue here is that Solidity and EVM are kind of very much tied together. It's, it, it is possible theoretically to, to you know, write a program in let's say Rust or C or Go and compile to EVM, but it's not simple, and I don't think anyone has actually gone through the effort, right? Um, can we actually choose an, a, a little set of opcodes that are actually more general um, and allows like people to write in whatever language they prefer? Um, also, especially like it's you know as a Solidity, like you have to learn you have to learn a lot of the custom stuff from Solidity, whereas you don't want to have to learn that. You want to just like take whatever programming language you know and then compile it down to whatever the blockchain uses, right? Um, so one very common target is WebAssembly. Another one is Move. You guys might have heard of Move. This is what I think Aptos and Sui use. Um, and that one works just as well. But here, um, I want to show WebAssembly here. So WebAssembly is a good target because um, basically it, it, WebAssembly is a language that is designed, first of all, for the web. So the idea was that, you know, similar to like blockchains, um, the web uses only one language, JavaScript. And the idea was, how do we provide a environment that can run any language? And then uh, a few people made this standard called WebAssembly, which essentially meant is meant to be like a common target for a wide, wide variety of languages. Um, so as such that like it, WebAssembly is a much closer like approximation of what your physical machines use. Um, and therefore, any language that you typically compile down to like whatever your machine does uh, can use WebAssembly. So this includes Rust, C, C++, Go, Python, and like basically anything you can imagine can in some way be run under WebAssembly. Okay. The other point that I wanted to make is like, how do you, how do you take the code on left with the Solidity one, right? And provide an equivalent that's closer to the metal, right? Um, and this is essentially what WebAssembly allows as well. So this is just like a, like a visualization here, but essentially um, if you were to have the WebAssembly code on the left here, then it is possible to, to compile that ahead of time um, down to something that is much, much closer to what your computer runs. And as you can see here, like, you know, you saw earlier that there was a lot of instructions for the Solidity side of things. On the, on the right here, you can see there's very few instructions that can run very, very, very fast natively by your CPU. So this is where a lot of the performance unlock is. Um, and quite a few projects are going in this direction. So there's, there's you know, layer in R, XVM, um, but also Polkadot substrate. Uh, definitely these canisters, Arbitrum Stylus, and so on. They all kind of use the same idea of using WebAssembly as the common like um, language so that developers can use whatever is comfortable to them. Right. Um, the, second, the second thing I want to discuss here is the persistence. So as we saw earlier, the, the EVM state has a, has a pretty slow access time. You have to walk down the entire tree um, to get any bit of data. Specifically, I think it's eight or 16 steps down for each address. Actually, I think it's more than that, 10 or 20, I believe. But yeah, in any case, um, it's, not, it's not very efficient. The other thing I wanna add though is that it, it has a pretty complex encoding. I think uh, like at the time, like they didn't know any better and like the electricity encoding that's like very difficult. And this is also like difficult to optimize. Um, so again, just a reminder of, of how it works here, right? You have like a tree. Um, and there's a lot of good reasons for why it is this way, but it is true that like it, it, it is fairly complex to to walk through this. So there's basically two projects that are that are just, that are exploring this. One is called MonadDB. Um, so MonadDB essentially is a rehabilitation of this idea, but in such a way that it's much much closer to to the to, the, to how like SSDs lay out data. So essentially um, Ethereum natively, so like the the, the clients commonly use the get. Um, what they do is that they typically just try to use a key value store and then have some addition, a bunch of additional code to essentially simulate the structure here. 
Um, what MonaDB is doing is essentially trying to do that natively, essentially just provide that same stuff on the disk, right? Um, and there's a very new project here that's I think much, much more, much more exciting, which is called the Nearly Optimal Merkle Try. Um, what they're doing essentially is that it's the same idea, but in a much more general setting so that any other blockchains that decide to that decide to also use like a Merkle try for their state tree can use it in a very generic setting without being tied to the model that Ethereum uses, right? Um, and yeah, that's the that's the that's the that's a very quick overview of like um, what currently blockchains are exploring in terms of performance. Um, I hope it gives a pretty good idea. Um, any questions? I'm happy to answer anything. We are welcome to ask your questions in the chat. I see Katja in particular, very excited. I can see her typing again um, as well. <laughs> Any more details and examples? That's very broad, but uh, Sherry, uh, I don't know if um, if you have any other examples that come to mind, perhaps you, perhaps you would like to, to run over them, but uh, I yeah, appreciate um, it's a there's, very broad. There's something you want an example of, like any, Oh, oh, of like databases, uh, like the latter part. Maybe you want to elaborate, Katja? Yeah, um, I can provide some examples. So I think what's what's something that's interesting to look at are Solana's model. Uh, sorry, not Solana, a uh, Solana's model. Um, so Solana actually doesn't use a, use a try at all. Solana just has a flat like key value, key value, key value mapping, right? Um, and so because typically Ethereum and other projects use like a, a tree because the idea is that you wanna have a hash of the entire state. Um, because the idea is that each block in Ethereum stores the hash of the real state. And so you can like have a proof that this is the state. Um, but Solana doesn't actually do that. Solana has only a flat like key value store. And then you wonder like how exactly do they, um, how exactly do they like enforce the state, right? Um, and so basically they have like different methods of validating the state that they use. You can look more into it. It's called, it's around proof history, their, their whole like consensus model. Um, yeah, there you go, catch example. Um, yeah, so there's something off the top of my head, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's perfect. It gives a uh, catch you something to dive into further afterwards as well, which is great. Um, and maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but um, it, in terms of layer N itself, do you want to talk a bit more about some things you're working on where people can kind of find out some more information and, and kind of keep up to date with everything that you're, you're doing. Yeah. So, um, I just quickly, right. So what we're building is the XVM. So the whole idea of the XVM is that, um, you know, we come from background of like running, uh, a DEX and our, our whole thing is like how you unlock the same level of performance as a trading system, um, in a blockchain system, right. In an optimistic rollout. And so what we, what we actually took the approach of is we architect the XVMs like whole pipeline in the same structure as you would um, as a high frequency trading system. Um, and so like everything is all just basically around like solid engineering and getting the most performance out of the system. So for example, um, the reason why I discussed WASM or WebAssembly is that we, we were thinking, how do you provide a generic environment for developers to use their language while also compiling it down safely to something that is as close as possible to the metal? Right. So what you can do here is you can take the program that the the programs that the, 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 the programmers provide you with and then compile that down to the closest thing possible to metal. Um, so that's one 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 system. And then the second part is enabling communication. So the other thing is like you know, similar to I was assuming similar to like the cosmos and 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 Polkadot, but essentially provide some primitives to send messages between other rollups that are running, right? And the key difference with layer N is that, um, so in the, in the, in the causal model, for example, um, each rollup, in, so not rollup, sorry, each app chain in Cosmos um, generally don't trust each other. And so what happens is that you have a quite a bit of, you have to do consensus between whatever communication happens. Same thing in layer zero, same thing in, in, in wormhole. Um, the idea behind layer N is that you want to provide some way of passing messages that um, is immediate in the same way as the internet. So what we do is that essentially we, we remove this lack of trust between the rollups. We essentially have the same source of trust for different rollups. And what happens is that they can now reliably send messages in like single shot. 
So the idea is to enable, yeah, exactly, fast cross-stream editing. So you want to enable basically like, I would say under like millisecond latencies for, for messages. Wow, very impressive. Um, and then this relates back to the previous, um, oh, there's another one, catcher. Ah, oh, very good question. Um, what, what are some kind of concepts, how in terms of this hackathon, how do you think people might like to kind of integrate your your tech and use that and again are there any links to docs and things like that oh, yeah we have docs um i can send you, send you guys a link amazing uh, um yeah I mean, but in terms of for the hackathon i would say um like i would stick to whatever is easiest for the hackathon which is like you know uh, i'm guessing the um the eigen the eigen layer stuff um we don't have direct integration with Eigenlayer at the moment. Um, but in terms of like discovering our tech, there we have docs you can look at. Perfect. Awesome. Well, as I said at the start, this session is obviously recorded. So um, for anyone here, if any questions pop up afterwards, or if you are in fact watching the recording, um, of course, you, you can always reach out afterwards to get those uh, questions answered. We have another question in the chat. Can you sum up what you do in three sentences? A very tricky one there, nice and concise, but um, yeah. Yeah, I would say, um, yeah, the, the main thing I can say, sorry, the main way I can see of like saying it is the internet or rollups. So enabling fast cross chain communication under like in millisecond latencies and bare metal performance. Perfect. Smashed it. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, as I said, yeah, thank you in the chat. Um, if any more questions do pop up, feel free to ask away. Um, do you have any kind of community boards or anything like that in particular that you would um, point people towards? A Discord channel? Is is Twitter yeah, yeah, or yeah. X the best yeah, place? Or? Yeah, yeah, so we have a, we have a Twitter. Um, I can show the awesome. Twitter as well as the... Um, there's also the Discord, which I need to find the <laughs> link to, but yes. Perfect. Well, as you're dropping that in the chat, um, we've obviously shared the docs, so feel free to have a look through that. Um, if any more questions do pop up, the Twitter has also just been dropped in the chat, which is very helpful. Um, the particip uh, participants dropped a Discord as well, so we've got all bases covered. Um, and of course, we'll include these in the description of the recording as well. So, um, Shahari, uh, unless there's any kind of final remarks from you or, or final things to share, I think we're all good to wrap things up there. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you once again for joining us. Um, a really get, great session and lots of uh, extra links and docs for people to dive into there. Um, thank you to the participants for joining us and we're looking forward to seeing you all again next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah.